Hello and welcome to another episode of Handloader TV. Now before we dive into this episode talking about the 30 Super Carry cartridge and this Nighthawk Custom 1911, I want to take a brief moment to remind you guys to be sure to check out handloadermagazine.com and riflemagazine.com as well. There's tons of great information and articles on both those websites. We offer online exclusive content and a lot of that is free to view if you just want to check it out, see what we're all about. And if you so desire, a great way to support this channel here is to subscribe to these magazines and then you're actually getting something for your money. You get great information, low data, all kinds of technical articles from gunsmithing to hand loading and everything in between. So I would highly encourage you guys to check that out. Now let's go ahead and dive into the nuts and bolts on this video. This is a brand new cartridge from Federal. It was officially introduced at the SHOT Show in 2022. And at the time of this filming, Sammy just recently approved it, and it is the 30 Super Carry. A very interesting little cartridge. There's been a handful of articles, speculation, and even a little bit of misinformation out there just going through uh, Google search results and stuff like that. So we're going to try and refrain from any speculation in this article and present with you just the facts and everything you need to know about this cartridge start to finish, including hand loading. We're also going to shoot some factory ammunition and test out this Nighthawk Custom 1911. So again, Sammy recently approved this cartridge and it's very interesting because it is the same length as a 9mm Luger cartridge and it's very similar dimensionally to the 7.65 French long and that's actually a cartridge I used as a model to develop some of the load data for this and kind of extrapolate loads. So very similar to that, a very old cartridge, been around for a while, but Federal claims to have uh, engineered and designed this cartridge from the ground up, so interesting there. Now it uses bullets that are .312 inches in diameter. Your typical 30 caliber bullet is .308 inches in diameter, and a lot of uh, 32 calibers are .312 inches in diameter. So interesting that they chose to call it the 30 Super Carry, but it uses bullets that are .312 inches in diameter. So don't get confused on that, especially with the hand loading side of things. Now it is the same length as 9mm, but it's significantly narrower. And because of that, it lends itself well to being used in narrower double stacked magazines. And that means you could potentially produce a more compact, slimmer framed uh, handgun for concealed carry purposes, provided that gun can handle the 52,000 PSI that Sammy has set maximum pressure for this particular cartridge. Now that is pretty hot, but it's not unheard of. There are other cartridges that have very high pressure ratings, very similar to the 30 Super Carry. One off the top of my head would be 5.7 by 28, and I've played with that cartridge a lot as well, with no issues. So overall, a very interesting cartridge, and I think this could have the potential to have some interesting applications in countries where they restrict the use of military cartridges for civilians. And I also find it very fascinating that Federal decided to design this cartridge um, with the sole purpose of concealed carry in mind. And I think that's pretty interesting and pretty neat as well. So, now that you've got the nuts and bolts of the cartridge, let's go ahead and take a closer look at this Nighthawk 1911 we have before us. Since the 30 Super Carry cartridge is relatively new at the time of this filming, there's not very many firearms manufacturers out there that are chambering handguns in the 30 Super Carry. At the time, again, there's only two that I'm aware of, and that is of course Nighthawk Custom and Smith & Wesson. They're both chambering firearms and multiple models in the 30 Super Carry cartridge. Now we went ahead and selected this Nighthawk Custom 1911 for all of our load development and review process of the cartridge because number one, these handguns are well known for their quality and performance. Nighthawk Custom has long said one gun, one gunsmith, meaning one gunsmith start to finish works on this firearm and they do a fantastic job of hand fitting parts and just making a really high end, high performance firearm. And I, the reason why we picked this is because I really wanted to see what kind of accuracy this interesting little cartridge was capable of. And in order to fully uh, realize this cartridge's potential, we needed a very accurate gun. We don't want to be able to blame the gun if we have accuracy issues. 
And secondly, I'd be lying if I said I'm not playing the strength of materials game just a little bit with such a high pressure cartridge and with such very little data out there. When I am, uh, developed the loads for this, there was no published load data out there, so I had to use quick load and extrapolate a lot. So playing the strength and materials game with this 1911, just a little bit. Now, let's go ahead and take a closer look at this gun, walk you through some of its features. The coating on it, they call it a DLC, a diamond-like coating on the frame and the slide. And you'll notice the barrel is gold in color. That's because that's a gold titanium nitride be coated barrel. It's a five inch barrel, match grade. We have a forged government sized frame on this guy. And we have a flared magwell rail scale G10 grips with aggressive texture to aid in recoil control. And the mainspring housing and the front strap are checkered 25 lines per inch and ultra high cut front strap for a higher grip. This is all to aid in recoil control. The beaver tail is even cut out to accommodate uh, the hammer. And I'll go ahead and show you guys that. Obviously this gun is clear here. I've checked it multiple times. We're clear. So if I go ahead and drop this hammer, you can see on that beaver tail how it's cut out so that hammer can fit in there. This is all done to reduce the leverage that recoil has on you by allowing you to get a higher grip on the firearm. And it's pretty interesting and pretty neat to see just how much thought process went into that to make this gun just as nice and as efficient as it possibly could for the shooter. The uh, mainspring housing in Magwell, that is a one-piece design. The mag release is very positive. It ejects magazines nicely. Safety is very positive. Slide stop and release, very smooth like butter. The slide is smooth as glass. It just feels really nice. And I'll showcase all this for you in a moment. The trigger is a lightweight aluminum custom tri-cavity trigger, which breaks super cleanly, super crisply at three pounds, six ounces on an average of five pulls on our Wheeler Engineering trigger pull gauge. So a very nice trigger there. The reset is super crisp, very positive, feels great. Really like this handgun. It can probably, uh, I don't think I'd be able to outrun the trigger on this guy. It is just very nice. Rolling right along here, um, we have a Heine Ledge solid black rear sight, slide serrations on the front and the rear. Uh, the front sight is a black sight with a 14 karat solid gold bead inlaid in there. So that's really nice and not having a whole lot of experience with guns like this, that gold bead actually is really, really nice. To, it picks up very quickly, very nicely, and that front sight just fits absolutely perfectly in the rear sight notch. So kind of a, a very nice best of both worlds, I would almost say target style sights. And the sight radius is 6.50 inches. The barrel is crowned flush with the bushing up here. Heavy angle slide lightning cuts, which means this allows the gun to cycle a little bit faster. Absolutely outstanding fit and finish. The weight of the firearm unloaded is 38.2 ounces. And the magazines are of exceptional quality. Very nicely made there. And they have the Nighthawk Custom on them. 30 Super Carry on the bottom there, so you don't get them mixed up with your standard 9mm or 45 ACP magazines. And they have a capacity of 12 plus one in the chamber of the firearm. So you get two more rounds in the magazine with 30 Super Carry as compared to, say, 9mm. Now, as far as the safety is concerned, extremely positive. Slide stop just smooth as butter. And I do, if you'll notice here, as I do that one more time, I do have to reach just ever so slightly to get my hand on that. It is a full size, full frame 1911. And this barrel coating on here, and just a combination of that and the fit and finish, the slide is so, so smooth, like butter, like I said. 
And it's hard to relay this in a video because you almost have to get your hands on it and see it and feel it for yourself to appreciate how it feels. It's hard for me to relay that with just words. If you ever have a chance to handle one of these guys at a local gun store or a gun show or something like that, I'd highly encourage it so you can get a feel for what this really feels like. Anyways, the reset, I'm going to go ahead and show you that for the video's sake. I do not like dry firing very nice 1911s like this, but I'm going to do it one time for the video. So of course we are clear, double checked it. I'm going to go ahead and squeeze the trigger here. That's nice. Go ahead and lock it back. I'm going to drop the slide. <laughs> There's the reset right there. Just super nice, super nice. Very short reset, very clean, very crisp. So on that note, now that you know all about the handgun, let's go ahead and jump over to the hand loading side of things. So before I walk you through step by step what you need to do to hand load for this cartridge, there is a big caveat that I need to inform you guys about. There is no published load data for this cartridge at the time of this filming. So I've been extrapolating data using Quick Load, Gordon's reloading tool, looking at similar cartridges, comparing and contrasting the load data there, running through tons of mathematical calculations, it took me a very long time to come up with this data. Now I'm sure that uh, Bullseye, Winchester 231, True Blue, and Unique would all be very suitable powders for this. The accurate number five I'm kind of on the fence on. I think it can be used safely, but I think your window's going to be very narrow with it. But we'll see. We'll find out in our uh, final load development testing. So. Use extreme caution if you're going to be using this data. It is not pressure tested. I was very careful in it. I'm using velocity as my guide, checking for pressure signs, doing everything I possibly can to make sure that these loads are reliable and safe. But as always, use at your own risk. So now that that's out of the way, I unfortunately was unable to get uh, any brass for the 30 Super Carry but I could get factory loaded ammunition. So I bought a bunch of this Federal American Eagle 30 Super Carry, which actually shot really well. And I shot it all up. And so I'm using once fired Federal brass from factory ammunition. And I went ahead and selected RCBS reloading dies. It's a three die set with a sizing die, which is carbide, an expanding die, and then a seating and crimping die, which I really prefer to crimp as a separate step but we'll walk you through that in a moment. Now, what I will not walk you through is dispensing powder. It's, uh, it's a relatively simple operation, and quite frankly, I don't want to waste any powder at this time, dispensing it into dummy cartridges, or you know, it's just easy to get things mixed up while I'm filming these videos. So we won't be dispensing powder. So on that note, we'll go ahead and get started here. I have my once fired Federal case. I'm going to go ahead and place it in the shell holder here. And the die has been preset up. What I did is I screwed the die until it contacted the shell holder. And then I have a little bit of cam over. And you can kind of hear my squeaky press on that. So we'll run it up into the die, like so. Now, one thing I did notice is this die. If you look very closely towards the bottom of the case, and this is a once fired case that I haven't run through the tumbler yet, I will do that for all of my hand loads. I always clean my brass, but for demonstration purposes, this case is still dirty. It doesn't quite size down as far on the case as I would like it to. Let's see if we can get a little bit better view of that. You can kind of see where the die stops. And it doesn't go all the way down to the base of the cartridge. But so far, I haven't had any issues with uh, functionality or feeding or anything like that. But just something to note. And an easy and quick fix for that would be to uh, try and find a different die manufacturer. But at the time, RCBS is the only ones I'm aware of that are making 30 Super Carry dies. But I'm sure that will change. Another alternative is you could take a lathe and you could turn down the die a little bit and just kind of uh, remove some material on the die itself. 
and get the die body closer to that carbide ring there, and then you'd have no problems. Next up is our expanding die. I like to expand all my cases before I prime them. So this guy should be pretty much preset here. Put a little bit of flare on there. And then what I always like to do once I flare my case, double check it, make sure that my bullet is going to sit down in there nice and straight. At least as straight as I can eyeball it and it looks pretty good. And I don't want to over expand my cases, mostly because I want that case to have some tension on that bullet. I'm not too worried about the case life. I think the primer pockets on this particular cartridge will go before I encounter a uh, split case or something along those lines. But I, I like to make sure that that case is exerting some force on that bullet, that there's still some tension there. So we'll go ahead and expand these guys up. And then from there, once I finish expanding all of my cases, I like to go ahead and use a hand primer. I've been using this Frankfurt Arsenal hand primer for a very long time, and I'm a big fan of it. I think it is a little bit faster than priming on the press, and it offers me a little bit of mobility as well. So what I'll go ahead and do is insert the case into the hand primer, give it a squeeze, and I've selected CCI 500 primers um, for all of my testing. I did test using small pistol magnum primers, using small rifle primers, and small pistol primers. And in my initial testing, um, the, the small rifle primers generated more pressure, and of course magnums slightly more pressure than the small pistol primers. And I experienced no primer related failures. A lot of that has to do with the geometry of the firing pin inside this 1911. But these CCI 500 small pistol primers have worked very well so, for me so far. They also exhibited lower extreme spreads and standard deviations in my standard testing with the powders I was using. Of course, your mileage may vary, but we, you should have no problems using small pistol primers in this cartridge, provided your loads aren't over pressure. So on that note, we've got our cases primed. We're gonna go ahead and seat some bullets. And I've selected uh, the Swift A-Frame. This is a revolver handgun bullet. Um, but I have a feeling it'll work really well in the 30 Super Carry as well, in spite of the taper crimp die that we're using. I still think it'll be a good performer. Then the other two bullets I'm using are Hornady XTP 85 and 100 grain. I tried to get Federal, Spear, Remington, a bunch of other 32 caliber bullets, and unfortunately, I just couldn't get them. Um, they're devoting most of their, their bullets to their ammunition, their factory loaded ammunition. So bullets are pretty hard to come by, unfortunately. Um, and there's a lot of shortages and stuff like that that we're still dealing with at the time of this filming. So it kind of is what it is. I apologize. I wish there was more and I had more time to get components. Now, when it comes to seating my bullet, I just set it in there as straight as I can eyeball it. And these are 85 grain Hornady XTP bullets. They are loaded to 1.085 inches overall loaded length. And that puts them nicely inside that cantilure for crimping purposes. They, uh, they're a great little bullet. I've used these in 327 Federal Magnum. Had great performance out of them. And there we have it. So you basically get the idea. It's like loading any other handgun cartridge out there for the most part. Relatively simple and straightforward. And as always, I like to crimp as a separate step. So in order to set up my crimp die, it's also my seating die, I'll back out the seating stem quite a bit so it doesn't contact our bullet and seat it deeper. Then I will run the case up into the die and I'll go ahead and screw it down until I get some resistance there. Get a little bit of a crimp on it. And I'm going to go about eighth to a quarter turn. And I would encourage you guys, as always, to measure your crimp. This didn't put very much crimp, so we need a little bit more there. 
So that's about a quarter turn on the die. Now I can see visually that I have a crimp and it's hard to see in the video because it is a taper crimp, but it is crimped there. And you can take your calipers and take a measurement of that crimp. And I like to do that as a separate step because I feel it increases the overall consistency and accuracy of your ammunition. And the crimp is a critical step, especially with certain powders, because it will aid in consistent powder burn and consistent ignition. So there you have it. There's everything you need to know about hand loading this 30 Super Carry. We just loaded up some dummy cartridges. Of course, if we were loading up real ammunition, we would dispense powder after priming and prior to seating our bullets. But there you have it. Now let's go ahead and take this ammunition that I've already preloaded. We'll go ahead and go hit the range and we'll see what this handgun is capable of and see how well the cartridge performs for us. So as you can see, we're out on the range now. Target is down range at 15 yards. Ailer model 35P chronograph is set up 10 feet from the muzzle to record all of our velocities. And according to the Kestrel 5700, the temperature is approximately 70 degrees. We have very little to no wind today. The humidity is about 40%. Pressure is 25.25 NHG, and the altitude is about 5,000 feet elevation. So, for this video, to start out, we thought we'd try something a little bit different, and we'll be starting out by using some factory ammunition, testing the handgun. First up is a Federal Premium Personal Defense 30 Super Carry 100 grain HST. So I've got five rounds in a magazine here. We'll load it up. The gun should have settled by now. We fired about eight to 10 settling shots with the handgun. We're on target, so let's go ahead and see what kind of group we get and the velocity. Here we go. So the next factory loaded ammunition that we're going to try is the Spear Gold Dot Personal Protection. It is loaded with a 115 grain Spear Gold Dot bullet. Good stuff. I'm a personal, personally a big fan of this stuff. Load up the gun. And we'll see how it does. So this is the last little bit of factory ammunition that we're going to try. This is the Remington High Terminal Performance HTP, loaded with a 100 grain jacketed hollow point. So on that note, we'll go ahead and load the gun. And put a group on the paper.
Rolling right along with our load development, we've swapped over to Alliant Bullseye Powder, a 4.3 grain charge with a 100 grain Hornady XTP bullet. Once fired federal cases, CCI 500 primers, and our overall loaded length is 1.085 inches. Drop the slide, shoot them, and group them. Five rounds, perfect functionality, decent velocity, and the slide locked back. What more could you ask for? So rolling right along, the next load is using True Blue Powder, a five grain charge with a 100 grain Swift A-frame bullet. Now this bullet is designed for revolvers, but I have a hunch we can get pretty good results out of this handgun with this bullet. Once fired federal cases, CCI 500 primers, and our overall loaded length is 1.095 inches. All right, guns on paper. Let's see how it does. So next up in the queue is Winchester 231 powder, a 4.5 grain charge with an 85 grain Hornady XTP bullet. Once fired federal cases, CCI 500 primers, and our overall loaded length is 1.085 inches. Loaded right into the cantalure on these guys. And once again, let's put a group on the paper. Good function, slide lock to the rear. That's what I like to see. Rocking and rolling. Next up, accurate number five, a 5.7 grain charge, 85 grain Hornady XTP, CCI 500 primers, and federal once fired cases. Overall loaded length is 1.085 inches. Locked and loaded, ready to go. So we're back from the range at the bench. We've gone over, measured our group sizes, and we've went ahead and picked out the best groups to review for this particular video. If you guys want to see all of the loads we tested though, because there was quite a few that we tested in this handgun, I would encourage you guys to check out www.loaddata.com and type in Handloader TV into the cartridge search there and look for the 30 Super Carry loads. There's all kinds of information in there. You'll be able to see the velocities, the group sizes, compare and contrast how everything performed, and see for yourself everything that we tested. The only thing you won't be able to see is the powder charges. We reserve that for subscribers to the website, and it's also a great way to support the channel, support what we're doing, and those loads, of course, are put on there, so you're helping grow the database each and every day with your subscription. So on that note, we'll go ahead and take a look at the best loads, starting out with uh, the factory ammunition that we tested, three different types. The first one was using Federal Premium Personal Defense HST. This is a 100 grain bullet, and it's held in place in a Federal nickel plated case. Um, we got pretty good results with this uh, right at one inch, not too bad. The standard deviations and extreme spreads were pretty good on that particular load. No complaints with it but not a stellar performer. Spear Gold Dot Personal Protection was tested next. This is a 115 grain Spear Gold Dot hollow point bullet. 
a fantastic performer and well-renowned bullet. Spear nickel-plated cases were used in this factory ammunition. We got a standard deviation of 8, an extreme spread of 23, and the group size is 1.44 inches with a flyer. I do believe that flyer was the first shot, um, cold bore, whatever. Without the flyer, if you were curious, it measures out to 0.73 inches. Now the best performance we got out of factory ammunition was with our Remington High Terminal Performance HTP. This is a 100 grain jacketed hollow point in Remington brass cases. And that group size measured 0.51 inches. So right about half an inch. Really good performance from factory ammunition there. A Little bit higher extreme spread and standard deviation than some of the other loads in factory ammo. But not bad all in all. So now let's go ahead and jump over to the hand loads and we'll start out with uh, Alliant Bullseye Powder. This is a 4.3 grain charge with a Hornady XTP bullet, 100 grains in weight. And we got a standard deviation of 14, an extreme spread of 36. And the average velocity on this guy was 1,153 uh, feet per second, measured out to 0.67 inches in group size. And overall, really good performance, and we still had a little bit of wiggle room to work up higher if we wanted to, about two-tenths of a grain uh, under max, maybe even a little bit more. So, pretty good results there. The next powder that we went ahead and tried was Ramshot True Blue Powder, a five-grain charge, with a 100-grain Swift A-frame bullet. Super impressed with this. The group size measures out to 0 0.40 inches, a standard deviation of eight, an extreme spread of 21, and the average velocity is 1,147 feet per second. Pretty good results there. I really like those Swift A-frame bullets. I really like True Blue Powder. I think it's, uh, it's something that's often overlooked by most hand loaders, but it is an extremely versatile powder, and it meters like water through your typical uh, powder measures. Great powder option, great results. And in spite of this being advertised as a revolver bullet, it functioned flawlessly in our semi-automatic with a taper crimp applied to the bullet. Can't complain about that. Now the next target we went ahead and tried is using Winchester 231 powder, a 4.5 grain charge with an 85 grain Hornady XTP bullet. A little bit higher extreme spread than what I would like to see on this guy. The extreme spread was 51, standard deviation was 18. Average velocity is 1,288 feet per second. This is really close, if not a max load, so use extreme caution when developing hand loads uh, with Winchester 231 there, working up to 4.5 grains, very close to max. Group size of 0 0.70 inches is outstanding. And let me tell you, with Winchester 231, I had great results across the board. I didn't have any group sizes over, um, I think, 0 0.80 inches. And all of them were between that and the half inch mark. Very good results there. It's a great powder for consistency across the 30 Super Carry cartridge. Now this last powder um, is interesting. It's accurate number 5 powder, a 5.7 grain charge with an 85 grain Hornady XTP bullet. A standard deviation of 11, extreme spread of 28, and average velocity was 1,317 feet per second. This is definitely a max load. The group size was 0.65 inches, so very respectable, good performance. I do not believe this load is over the 52,000 PSI mark just because of the powder I was using. But when it comes to accurate number five, you have a very narrow window that you can use in this handgun. The first two loads I tried failed to lock the slide to the rear. And then I had three more good loads after that. And by the time I got to the sixth hand load, moving progressively, slowly up in charge weight, I hit pressure signs and I had to back off. So this is the load right before hitting pressure. It functioned flawlessly in the gun, the slide locked to the rear did everything it was supposed to, but use extreme caution when using accurate number five because the window you have for operating the pistol and hitting pressure, it's a very narrow window there. So there you have it. Those are the loads we developed, and of course we did a lot more. As always, if you want more information, check out loaddata.com. 
So now that you've seen the accuracy and results we got from our hand loads, from our factory ammunition testing, the powders we used, the velocities we got, you can get a really good overall feeling for the performance of the handgun and the cartridge, and you can make an educated decision for yourself if the 30 Super Carry is something you're interested in, if it's relevant to you, and you can now decide for yourself. I do want to close out this video though by offering a few of my personal um, thoughts on the overall review process here and everything we did. I want to start out with the cartridge itself, the 30 Super Carry. It is an interesting cartridge. It proved itself in our testing to be very accurate, to be reliable. And after crunching some of the velocity numbers and calculating the, the energy, I do think that the terminal performance seems to be there with the 30 Super Carry. It's pretty respectable in terms of velocity and energy downrange. I don't want to get into the, is it better than this cartridge, is it better than that cartridge, because a lot of people uh, don't realize how subjective ballistics can be. It depends on the load you're using, it depends on so many variables, I don't want to get into that uh, muddied water. I do think it does fill a nice gap between 380 Auto and 9mm Luger. Is it going to outperform 9mm Luger in every circumstance? No, absolutely not. Is it going to outperform 380 Auto? Generally speaking, I would say so in terms of velocity and energy downrange. So, do your research. Find out for yourself and be careful because you can't believe everything you read on the internet. So on that note, I do like having the option there. I think it's fantastic that we have these options available. If you don't like the cartridge, you don't have to buy into it. But it's nice to see that companies are out there trying to put new things on the market and be innovative and provide us, the consumers, with plenty of options to choose from. So on that note, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the, the gun itself here. This Nighthawk Custom President Model 1911 and 30 Super Carry. And of course it is clear here, as always. The gun performed absolutely flawlessly for us. I put over probably 650 rounds through this firearm. 450 of those rounds were without cleaning it, and it never had a malfunction. And in fact, in that uh, bit of a torture test, if you will, the slide still cycled smooth as could be. Safety remained positive. The trigger never felt gritty. The hammer never slowed down its fall. It just felt very nice. And I've been a little bit rough on it, and I almost feel bad because it is such a nice 1911. But it stood up to the torture, and it still feels absolutely flawless. Beautiful functionality from it. Excellent performance, capable of outstanding accuracy. The magazines are easy to load. They eject nicely from the firearm. They just fall free. Everything is just fit together and working together flawlessly, even after a high round count and a little bit of neglect on the cleaning part. So these guns are very expensive guns, but you really are getting what you pay for. They are high quality. It's basically like getting a custom rifle built, except this is a custom handgun. One gunsmith, one gun. They just perform very nicely and you get that quality. You get what you pay for. So I'll close out on that. I want to thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this video. We really do appreciate it. As always, if you liked what you saw, be sure to give us a thumbs up. Let us know in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you're notified when we post our next video. We have a ton of exciting new content coming up, lots of stuff in the works and planning out. So you don't want to miss out. And lastly, if you have any questions about hand loading for this cartridge, um, some of the tests we conducted, you want to know more about this gun, be sure to leave a comment below. I do my best to read and respond to every one of those. And I love hearing your guys' personal experience, whether that be with Nighthawk Custom, the Redding T7 you see here, or the 30 Super Carry itself. Be sure to leave those in the comments. And I will catch you guys in the next episode.